Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like in the trades. I appreciate you stopping by the shop today. We haven't done a woodwind video in a while. This receiver on this bass clarinet has been damaged. We have to get this out and get it replaced. Let's jump on into it. Okay, so what we've got going on is this receiver is damaged and this is a part that we just replace I've already acquired our new part so we got to get this out of this plastic in the old days you had to use a torch and you had to put a piece of steel in the plug and then you had to heat this or use a bigger torch and you had to transfer the heat from the steel down into the receiver to melt the epoxy but not hurt the body because you'll melt this plastic body. Nowadays I use a high heat gun. Mine mounts on the wall. I have a control for it on the wall. And you can see it's hitting at 110 degrees right now. We're going to bump this up to about 190, I start to warm up the metal of the receiver. I know that at 190 degrees, I'm not going to melt the ABS, but it will heat the receiver nice and it will make the epoxy that, that's holding this in let go. So this is going to take a few minutes and I'm just going to take my time. There are a number of sources that the temperature controlled heat guns can be gotten from. I've got three or four different varieties. And you really have to experiment with what the temperature settings are going to do so you know where the where it melts shellac where it melts plastic um, if you're using it to seat pads what the temperature is for that there we go so what we can see is that no damage to the body and it just heats up this epoxy and makes it let go. So while we let that cool off for putting the new one on, I've got this piece of threaded rod, a couple of wing nuts, a couple of fender washers, and I turned a tapered plug and I'll insert some of that footage. The reason that I like that tapered plug is because it will grab all the way down. I find that sometimes when I'm just pulling against the top that it will still somehow be crooked. And if I pull it with this plug in it, it sets everything down. So that was a trial and error that I learned. Um, so being able to turn tapers is a wonderful thing. Okay, we need to get this old epoxy cleaned out of our joint area. So I'm going to grab a solder scraper for that. I just want to clean up this old epoxy. And I also want it to, to be a little rough around the inside so that my new epoxy 
we'll get a good adhesion. Then we want to fit. Yeah, there we go. A nice, tight, smooth fit. Rough up the plating in just a touch. Just give it a little bit of scuffs and scratches so that the epoxy is going to adhere to that a little bit better. Part A and Part B. Some new black dye that I've been looking for. Looking for. Start mixing that up. It doesn't have any sparkles to it. It is completely jet black. And I like to start with putting some inside the bore and then around the outside now another thing that I do is I specifically put it on this on the bottom And we remember our orientation goes to here and lines up with the liar holder. And for our final trick, we'll put on a spacer, a washer, and a big wing nut. And I like to try to measure them to where I don't have to screw them too far into either direction. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to drop through, I'm going to bring my plug. It's going to automatically center itself. Put some pieces behind it my washer get this threaded on there so you can buy expensive clamps to do this operation but I invested in this rod a long time ago and it works very well always has I put the screw in the receiver just to take up space so that it, this won't flare out I keep this it's just locked just to hold everything in place and then from there I just tighten up both ends okay we'll let this set and we'll check it later this afternoon well let's see how it came out my other bench has got horns and things on it so let's open this up. You can see we've got some epoxy to get that hardened up over there. So this will be pretty easy to knock out. Let's go to the brass room. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to reach in and punch those out because the inside of that receiver is the inner bore on this base clarinet. And so I can take these big lumpies and I can just push against them and they're going to come on out of the way. So what I've got, see, these little tags and that's a good thing to have it's a good thing that these tags are there that shows that your glue went all the way around and then penetrated out the bottom see now we've got 
No grungies in the way. Nice smooth transition. That's what we wanted to see. Do a little tidying up. But this came out fabulous and is good to go. Well, thanks everybody for dropping by the House of Tone today and hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks. Got to play on the old South Bend lathe, which is always fun. Got to see some other homemade fixtures that I've made over the years and things that I like to use. The heat gun, learning your settings, playing with the different settings and speeds can really help take your work to another level. Okay, I appreciate you watching and following along. This is Wesley signing out.